Good noon from the Holy Trinity Episcopal Church in Juneau, Alaska. We're very happy to have you with us. Um, you can join us in prayer if you go to uh, trinityjuno.org or you can just remain on and, and join us in prayer. This is, uh, this is the eve of a special day. Uh, tomorrow we'll be celebrating the Harriet Beecher Stowe, the author of um, Uncle Tom's Cabin, but it's also a day to celebrate um, Pauline, uh, Pauline, um, oh shoot, let me forget here, Pauline Murray, who uh, was a black woman raised in the South, an Episcopalian all of her life, and she uh, attended Howard University where, where, they, where she and others had sit-ins at a local diner decades before this, the celebrated sit-ins that we, that we learn about in our history books. She went on to become a lawyer, managed to make almost no money whatsoever um, because she was serving, um, she was serving humanity. She uh, also went to Africa and established a law school. And she, uh, at, the, at the end of her life, well, not at the very end of her life, when she was about my age, she became an Episcopal priest. And she was, um, it was after the, the death of her, of her partner. And uh, she always was a churchgoer, but this, this event in her life called her to, uh, to become a, a priest. And, um, and I and, and Jane, my wife, went to, uh, went to South Carolina to Durham and sort of on a pilgrimage. And we saw the place where she was born and raised and the church that she was baptized in, and um, and we celebrated Holy Communion with the people of her of her church in Durham, um, and it was it was a, a marvelous experience. So, remembering Pauline Murray, and um, we pray. Oh God, make speed to save us. Oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Now a joyful psalm we, we recite and ch try to chant, Psalm 131. O Lord, I am not proud, I have no haughty looks. I do not occupy myself with great matters or with things that are too hard for me. But I still my soul and make it quiet like a child upon his mother's breast. And my soul is quieted within me. O oh, Israel, wait upon the Lord from this time forth forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today we have a, a reading from Romans, beginning at chapter 8, at the first verse. There are therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk according to the flesh, but who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live, in a, live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. 
It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray, and we pray the prayers of obligation to the members of the Society of St. Simeon and St. Anna. As, O oh God of grace and mercy, Give your blessing to the Diocese of Alaska, and I welcome all of you to, to pray with me. Watch over our churches, sustain our people, strengthen our leaders, through the Holy Spirit guide and guard the diocese, keeping it always under your care and protection. Let us be a loving family, serving you faith in faithful devotion to the gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ. Give your blessing to Mark, our bishop. Give him a spirit of courage and right judgment, a spirit of knowledge and love. Let your Holy Spirit be his companion. Let your gospel be always in his thoughts. May your presence in his life be a light for all to see in every good work for the building up of your people and to the glory of your holy name. Give us the blessing of your example. Help us to follow in the way of Jesus today and every day. Give us compassion at the center of all we do, compassion for ourselves as disciples still young in faith, compassion for others as members of our own family in God. Let us become examples for others as so many others have been examples to us through your love and for the sake of your glory. Watch over all elders and brothers and sisters of the Society of St. Simeon and St. Anna. If any are in times of sorrow, sickness, or need, give them the touch of your healing hand. If any are in times of joy, thanksgiving, or fulfillment, give them the song of, of angels to praise your name. Let us be your servants in this life, just as we will be your sons and daughters, in the life to come. Now we have an opportunity for, for prayer and intercession. Pray for Dirk and Matthew, for Marilyn, for Taylor and her sons. We pray for peace in Eastern Europe, and we pray for, for mercy for those around the world who are affected by this, by this conflict. We pray for Sam, and we pray for the poor in our nation who are forgotten. And we pray that that we will 
that we will work for their, to relieve their suffering. Amen. From Trinity Sunday until the beginning of the convention, which is coming soon, all Episcopalians are invited to join together for a season of prayer for the church. In this dedicated season, we pray for the Episcopal Church, who by God's grace is becoming new and new, a new and reformed church to be the Episcopal branch of the Jesus movement, a church that looks, acts, and loves like Jesus and who follows his way of love. So we pray, O oh, merciful Creator, your hand is open wide to satisfy the needs of every living creature. Make us always thankful for your loving providence and grant that we, remembering the account that we must one day give, may be faithful stewards of your good gifts through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. May God the Father bless us. May Christ take care of us. May the Holy Spirit enlighten us all the days of our life. The Lord be our defender and keeper of body and soul, both now and forever, to the ages of ages. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May God kindle in us the fire of love. Amen. Amen.